Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm coming to y'all with another knife review and this one is on something a little bit different. This is a Kershaw, believe it or not, and this is the Kershaw Pub. Let's see if I can get the model number in here for you. Maybe. If I can get my camera to focus. There we go, the 4036. This one is the blue aluminum handled version. There is also a G10 handled version. Oh, come on, focus. There you go. There's a uh, G10 handled version and a carbon fiber version. I happen to have this blue aluminum one. And this was actually sent to me as a gift by Laura here on YouTube. And I'm gonna go ahead and say thank you for that because I never would have actually gotten a chance to test this knife out if it hadn't been sent to me. And that's because I would have never bought this knife personally, just looking at it from, uh, you know, online. The, the, the design doesn't do anything for me. And here in Texas, I can carry literally any kind of knife. I can carry a butterfly knife or, you know, balisong. I can carry an automatic. I can carry a gigantic bladed kukri or dagger. And I can carry any size folding knife that I want with any kind of blade shape and any kind of locking, uh, locking mechanism. So a smaller keychain carried friction folder like this isn't something that would have ever been on my radar. But that being said, that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be reviewed. And even though I don't personally love this knife myself, I do think it's interesting. I kind of like having it. I don't love it. That doesn't mean I shouldn't do a review on it because honestly, too many people get bogged down in terms of reviews by what they like and what they don't like, and they lose sight of the purpose of a review, which is to aid the potential customer in making a decision on whether or not to buy this knife. What I'll say is, unless you just like friction folders or stranger knives, if you're an American, you probably don't uh, you probably don't want this knife. There's just more uh, convenient and utilitarian options out there for us that we can legally carry. However, if you're overseas somewhere, perhaps in Europe or uh, you know Asia, I don't know the knife laws of every individual country. But if you're in a country within one of those continents, uh, this might be something that you're looking for because of your own knife laws. I know, uh, I believe it's the UK can't have a blade over a certain size or a certain length. They can't have a locking knife and they can't have a knife that deploys one-handed. Well, this can be deployed one-handed, but I don't think it technically qualifies as a one-handed knife. Uh, so this would be the perfect UK knife, which I think is where the name pub kind of comes from. Okay, if it was meant, meant for Americans, we probably would have called it the bar. <laughs> Just saying. Anyhow, getting into the review, I want to say this is very, very strange for a folding knife. It is a friction folder, not a slip joint, as a lot of places very incorrectly list. The difference is a slip joint has a back spring that holds the blade in place. And actually, if you'll give me just one second, I'll get one out of my knife case here and bring it in to show you guys. Should have had this prepared ahead of time, but I didn't. So a slip joint, whenever you open the blade, you have a back spring that comes in. You can see it lifting and snaps in behind the blade in order to keep it open. It doesn't lock the blade. You can fold the blade. But the tension from that back spring is what keeps the knife blade open in use. With a friction folder, you have a little metal tab. Okay, I'm going to tilt this so you can see. Whenever the knife is fully closed, the ball bearing on that little metal tab pops into the blade. There's a little cutout in the blade and that ball bearing pops right into it. When you open it, you can see the tab lifts. I'm trying to get this on camera, it's kind of awkward. Okay, focus. There you go. When the blade fully opens, just like when it uh, fully closes, that tab engages yet again, and that little ball bearing rests inside of a uh, notch in the base of the blade. And that is what keeps the friction folder open. So similar concept, but a little bit of a different design. This is a slip joint right here. Whoops. <laughs> this is a slip joint. This is a friction folder. Both are ideal for people who cannot have a locking knife, but there is a bit of a difference in design. Speaking of design, on this one, we have a 1.6 inch sheep's foot blade made from 8CR 13 MOV. 8CR 13 MOV is a very proven steel by this point. I feel like that anyone who says it isn't adequate for EDC either has a much harder EDC uh, set of tasks than the average person has or are full of it. <laughs> because I have carried and used 8CR 13 blades for years, over 10 years as a matter of fact. 
and it's performed just fine for me. Even whenever I was working at Sears and I had to cut down, uh, break down boxes, cut up, uh, cut plastic straps off of our freaking lawnmowers, and everything else, cutting through zip ties, breaking down very heavy uh, cardboard, it performed just fine. Was it razor sharp at the end of every day? No. Did it touch up extremely easily? Yes. Did I need to sharpen it every single day? No. Usually hitting it against a honing steel was more than enough to bring the edge back to true when I actually didn't have to sharpen them all that often. If you take care of your knives, you don't actually have to sharpen them very frequently. Just hone them or uh, strop them and they'll be fine. That being said, HCR 13 MOV does sharpen extremely readily. It comes to a very nice fine edge, which this one is wearing and it takes a beautifully sharp edge. I've actually noticed that I can get my 8CR13 blades a lot sharper than various 420 and 440 variants. Will it hold it as long? Depends on the steel, depends on the heat treat on the 8CR13, where you're getting it from. This one from Kershaw. Same as any other Kershaw 8CR13 you've ever used. It held up just fine in my personal cutting tasks, and I actually have a funny story about those cutting tasks. So, I was being very stupid, and I was doing some cardboard cutting with it, which is not ideal because this is a very short blade and it's a very thick blade for its size, so it isn't the best cardboard cutter. When it, I'm talking about breaking down full-size boxes. It is definitely not ideal for that, but I wanted to see how well it would perform anyways. And I was beginning to get frustrated with it getting caught, so I chose to bring it over onto my leg for more leverage. And you guys already know where this is going. Uh, very stupid, never cut towards yourself. I should have remembered that from uh, the Boy Scouts but I was being dumb and I was you know just push cutting through this cardboard and because this is a uh, Warncliffe or sheep's foot style blade which means that the tip of the blade is actually at the very end of the cutting edge on an even plane or even level this tip stabbed about that deep into my leg <laughs> after it went through that cardboard it went through the cardboard through my jeans and into my freaking leg so with that being said, if anyone's doubting the ability of this sheep's foot style blade for penetrating clamshell packages or uh, opening you know, mail, opening boxes or uh, bubble envelopes you get in the mail, it was able to go through blue jeans and my thick fat thigh. <laughs> so it can definitely go through whatever kind of packaging you're opening. Uh, be smart with your cutting guys, don't do what I did, I should have been more careful. It is a stone wash finish blade, which is going to help aid it against rust. A very nice thing. I'm sick and tired of bead blasting on HCR 13 blades, and Kershaw was the worst about doing it. I'm very glad to see that they're doing some stone wash finishes now. And it is a very nice high hollow grind. It is extremely easy to get very sharp. However, again, due to that thicker stock on the blade, it will not be the best slicer for you. Will it perform? Yeah. Absolutely, does just fine. I did EDC this for a short while. It works well enough. Uh, again, trying to keep my opinions uh, as an American aside because I'm used to having one hand opening knives, bigger blades, different shapes. Um, trying to keep that, pr that all out of the way, the blade did extremely well in cutting tasks. And I have to remember that this knife is very likely not designed for me, an American. Um, how it carries is kind of strange because I've, I've carried it two different ways. The first one and the one I prefer was just drop it in the pocket, carry it like any old slip joint pocket knife type of thing. But the way it is designed to be carried, you can see when you open this up, you have a uh, carabiner type attachment, which is meant to go on your keychain. And so you can put it on there and you close the knife and now it's riding on your keys. And when you need to open it, you kind of start to engage the opening, slip it off your keychain and then finish opening the knife and using it. And then when you're done, of course, you slip it back off, put it back on your keys, and you go back to work. I did not like the keychain type carry with this knife. Even though it is a very lightweight at 1.9 ounces, according to Blade HQ, it just felt clunky on my keys and I could feel it banging around inside my pocket. I far prefer just dropping it in the pocket, letting it sit there, uh, anyone out there wears blue jeans? I'm assuming most of you do. Uh, you know that little pocket watch pocket we have in our, on all of our jeans on the right hand side? Just drop it in there, it fits in just fine. And that's the way I prefer to carry it, especially since this tab is a great extraction tool. Just grab onto it, pull it out, you're good to go. One thing I want to mention about the blade, by the way, is even though it isn't a locking blade, because we do have such an extended tang 
that that is meant for uh, the keychain attachment, when the knife is open, you're pressing down directly against that. So it's very unlikely this is going to fold on you during cutting tasks, unless you're putting so much pressure on this tiny little blade that it overpowers not only the locking tab or the uh, tension tab, but also overpowers the amount of pressure you're putting on with your thumb, in which case you might want to invest in a different knife, maybe a fixed blade knife, a locking knife, or perhaps just buy yourself a box opener if you aren't allowed to carry those kinds of things. Overall, the you know lockup is fine. Whenever the knife opens up, you can hear a nice audible click. Okay, one more time. And side to side, there's a tiny bit of play in mine. I could easily take that out, take that out at the pivot point if I cared to. Honestly, I don't care all that much. Um, other things to discuss on this knife are the other tools it ha uh, that it has built into it. It has a bottle opener, and it actually works okay. I did notice that I very often needed to do two passes on the bottle, but it will function as a decent cap lifter, which is why this is called the pub. It's kind of the perfect pub knife, although every bar that I go to, the bartender opens the beer for me, so I don't know. Maybe it's a little different where you are. Maybe uh, the UK is a little bit of a different place, but the bottle opener does work really well. And obviously, if you're just out and about with your friends, it's built into your, ni into your knife, a feature I kind of always like to see. The flathead screwdriver, however, is less than ideal because of how rounded it is. I'll see if I can get this to show on camera. Maybe that's showing, maybe it's not, but it's a very rounded head on here. It should have been sharper on the corners because as it is right now, there we go. As it is right now, I notice it slips out of a lot of flathead screws. It's better than nothing, but it's not the best screwdriver in the world. Um, if you're looking for a multi-tool, just buy a multi-tool or a Swiss Army knife. Because this right here is essentially a pocket knife plus a bottle opener. This doesn't have much purpose, and it's a little too thick to really use as any kind of miniature pry tool. Overall, it's, it's definitely an interesting knife. I think it's a great musician's tool. Um, as a guitar player myself, I think that it's kind of cool to have on me uh, at the bar just for, again, opening bottles if for some reason I need to. I can use it to cut into those packs of strings if I need to do an uh, impromptu string change there at the bar. And even though most equipment uses Phillips head screwdrivers or Phillips head screws, some older amplifiers do still use flatheads, so this will be better than nothing, though you should probably have the right tool on you. It's not the perfect musician's knife. But it's kind of cool. Uh, personally, I would say, again, just carry a multi-tool because the wire cutters will be very handy for cutting off guitar strings. <laughs> uh, all in all, I can definitely say that it's interesting. I appreciate getting the chance to use it and carry it. Not something I would personally go out and buy, but if you're not allowed to have a locking knife, and I keep dropping it for some reason, if you're not allowed to have a locking knife, this is kind of a way to go. Uh, and you can open it one-handed. It's meant for a two-hand deployment. Um, but you can kind of cheat the system and open this one handed by pulling your thumb up here to this top ring, starting the blade, then pr pulling your pointer finger over the top of the ring and sliding it open. Okay, a few steps required, but it can be open one handed. But if you're looking for a knife uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't lock, that has a short blade, that isn't technically one hand deployable, and has a bottle opener? <laughs> this might be absolutely perfect for you. For me, not really my thing, not my cup of tea. Uh, I do own it. I will probably continue to use it here around the house, uh, but not my favorite EDC knife, but it might just be perfect for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Until next time, peace and take care.